sun is raging. Welcome, race fans, to another episode of the Rubbin' is Racing Daily Fantasy NASCAR Show. It's 2019, and we are back. All of your awesome comments brought Lear and I back. We had to do it. Sorry about last week. I was a little under the weather, uh, a lot under the weather. That's why we didn't get it filmed. But we're back with Atlanta, Atlanta Motor Speedway for the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500. Before we get into the race details, Lear and I wanted to personally take a moment and thank each and every one of you guys for all of your comments. That, those are the reasons why we are back here doing this show is because the community that you guys helped us create and we absolutely loved your guys' comments so much so I know it brought emotions to both Lear and I. And so we're back. Lear, do you have anything you want to say before we get to the race details? Dude, I am just absolutely pumped to be back and be part of this and be part of Sunday action, Sunday fun days again. Um, and I'm coming off a sweat fest today uh, of almost taking down the Xfinity race. Um, but that's what makes it all worth it, brother, is the sweat. Yeah, you had a great Xfinity race, and then I had a great truck race right after it. There was some good day today. Hopefully we can parlay that into tomorrow or today if you're watching this video Sunday morning. So with that said, guys, let's get back into the show format. As usual, stages this week for the Folds of Honor 500 are going to be at lap 85, lap 170, and then we race all the way to the finish. Interesting or fun fact here at Atlanta Motor Speedway is we have a new aero package on NASCAR's oldest surface, rendering all historical data null and void. <laughs> Great fun fact, brother. Weather should be in the low 60s with a, with it being sunny. It'll be a nice change from the fog and rain we saw during the races today. All right, we've got a lot of NASCAR to talk about. The first thing that we want to talk about that is something that has affected all fantasy NASCAR players and even just all NASCAR fans is the loss of the J-Ski site. J-Ski was like, purchased by ESPN and then ESPN faded them out. We no longer have this awesome resource for NASCAR and for fantasy NASCAR. To be honest, Lear, this is one that hit me hit me pretty hard this offseason. How about you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's, um, you know, ESPN's historic uh, run with NASCAR. I mean, it goes all the way back with, like, you know, I don't know if you remember watching Dr. Jerry Punch from the pits, but, like, <laughs> I mean, they go way back into NASCAR, and it's crazy to me uh, to think that one of the world's largest sports providers has decided to drop um, NASCAR from their basic existence. Because, you know, like Ricky Craven and Bob Pockris and all the guys that uh, do media for ESPN, I mean, basically I had to go out and find new jobs. So, um, you know, now it's, you know, Fox and. NBCSN that are that are carrying everything for uh, NASCAR and it's just like anything in life everything evolves everything changes and I'm um, hoping that this is for the better but unfortunately um, you know Jay Ski was was part of that and um, you know that was a great site I mean great place mm -hmm. to find some analytical data that you needed to get in a you know, quick pinch, and um, unfortunately, it uh, will no longer exist. But um, I don't know, man. I've got a feeling that uh, Jay Ski probably has something in his back pocket, and maybe gonna come up with something else. So, or um, maybe it just opens up another avenue for one of us out there to uh, take that avenue and uh, kind of roll with it. So, well, as all of our fans know, I am terrible at internet design, so it definitely won't be me. And you are even behind me on internet design, so I know it won't be you either. So hopefully well, somebody steps in. Um, I just, both of us, we were going to film at least over two hours ago. Uh, we couldn't because both of our computers were... Um, running on old versions of Mac OS. So um, we couldn't even get the video to up and roll because Google Chrome had updated their version uh, of the system that we use. So, uh, yeah, um, so we got a little late start on that. So if that tells you anything. Yeah, the gray hair in both of our beards is, is proving our 
we're becoming those guys with technology, Lear. Like, it's pretty sad. But anyways, we need to move on. We've also got the new arrow package that, as you said, renders history completely worthless. And we saw Hamlin win Daytona last week. Anything you want to add specifically on either one of those new bits of news? Um, I thought the uh, race was awesome. And week I took a different strategy and um, I made more lineups than I normally do. Um, and I, I really liked, I, you know, I tweeted out there, but I really liked Kyle Busch starting, um, you know, from, I think it was that from the 31st spot. And I also love Derek Jones from that 28 spot. I did like that Denny Hamlin from the number 10, but, um, you know, obviously it was just like Daytona, you know, taking that dart, throwing it on the dart board um, because, I mean, the big one was going to happen. And after a while, I mean, they were running quite a while without having any issues. Um, but eventually, you know, the big one happened there with Paul Menard getting in the back of Matt Benedetto. And let me just say real quick, I am so excited just from what we've seen so far from that number 95 Levine family racing vehicle with Matt Benedetto from behind the wheel and their new affiliation uh, with JGR and uh, Gibbs racing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think it's going to be amazing. I think that Matt Benedetto is going to maybe win a, a race this year, especially too, when they incorporate this new aero package. Um, I mean, it's going to, instead of having those, you know, three or four guys that are out there leading every single race and separating themselves from the field, it's going to pull everybody back together. And it's going to get a lot of guys the chance or the opportunity to lead laps and win races. And I think it's going to be amazing. It's going to make for great racing. And we saw some of that last week at Daytona. And I don't know, it's pretty crazy, man, how uh, things happen for a reason. But seeing how JGR finished one, two, three, and um, number 11 was J.D. Gibbs' um, number, um, it's just, I don't know, man, it's just something, something to be said about that. And that's a pretty amazing feeling. Uh, honestly, I was kind of hoping that Kyle Busch would win it. I'm not the biggest Kyle Busch fan, but the guy's never won a Daytona. He's definitely a hall of famer in my book. Um, but it would have been cool to see him win a Daytona 500. But again, things happen for a reason and they happen the way they did. And, um, um, you know, it was a great race to watch. How about you? Yeah, no, I like I was winning more money when Rowdy was in first place, so Hamlin winning it like <laughs> Hamlin winning it uh, cost me some money, but still finish on the positive. Uh, the JGR one two three was absolutely impressive, especially on a track where you lose over half the field on most races. Um, I, I I to go back just a little bit on the Matt Benedetto thing. I think it's absolutely phenomenal the relationship that they forged so far. I think that he's been doing amazing things so far with this partnership and in this car. I think we're going to see amazing things out of him. The other thing I wanted to add here is Front Row Motorsports also looks like this new aero package has helped them out between that and what they ran last week at Daytona. They're running better. All those cars, McDowell, Reagan, like we're seeing, we're seeing them as a team turn that corner too. And I, I would love if NASCAR had more competitive teams and if we can get some of these littler teams to be more competitive, it's only better for the sport, and it's a lot better for fantasy NASCAR. No, I couldn't agree with you more, brother. I, you know, Michael McDowell, I, seen, I had him too because he started from like the 34th position. And, you know, a lot of the strategies during Daytona is just basically take the guys in the latter part of the field because you know – that eventually at some point the big one's going to take place and it's going to take out, you know, those 15 to 20 cars. And essentially that's what it did. Um, but, um, you know, I, I think Michael McDowell, again, it shows this week with him qualifying 12th. Uh, it just shows you that there's going to be more of that uh, happening this season, I, I believe, with them qualifying better and like jo um, Corey LaJoy with his face on the freaking hood of his car. But uh, with him, you know, practicing faster, uh, and qualifying better and it's just I think it's going to add a lot more competitiveness throughout um, the sport itself and it's going to bring fans back to the <laughs> back to the track spot it's be a good thing no I agree I I think it can only be a good thing and NASCAR had to do something essentially too I, I hope that it then brings like the way we started out three years ago with fantasy NASCAR on DraftKings and basically fantasy NASCAR in general, it's going to bring more people into that aspect of the sport and thus bigger tournaments, bigger payouts, and go back to kind of the way it was.
thoughts? I, I sure hope so. <laughs> because the way it was, NASCAR was losing uh, viewers, and so was DraftKings was losing players. And hopefully, hopefully these changes have helped right that ship. Um, but I think it's time for us to get back into talking about Atlanta and the Folds of Honor 500. And I don't know a better way to start talking about it than to have you christen off the 2019 with a burning rubber baby. So everybody, everybody, we, we've had some time off. So I'm just warning you, if your ears are sensitive or whatever, I will try to adjust this a little bit in post editing. But Lear may blow your ears off here. Go ahead, Lear. Do it to it, buddy. I really want to do it as loud as I can, brother. But unfortunately, we went to the world of wheels today. My uh, son is just, it's already 10 o'clock. He's passed out. My fiance, she's in, in bed as well. Um, so I'm down in the main cave, but I still could probably yell and wake them up along with the neighbors. Or, you know, you guys have seen the shows when I was uh, working out of town and doing it from the hotel room. But um, I think I'm just going to keep it toned and not at the top of my voice. But Burn and Rubber 2019 style, baby! Awesome. For a reserved burning rubber and one to kick off the year, I, I like that quite a bit there. All right, like, who do you have burning some rubber this for this race, Lear? Well, honestly, my man, it is um, – obviously, we're in, you know, territory that we have not seen before um, with this new package that we have. It's not the full-blown package um, that's going to take place throughout the remainder of the season. That's not going to be – um, deployed out until Las Vegas, but they're still going to be running aspects of the new aero package with the front splitter, um, the rear spoiler, and then also the tapered spacer. The only thing that's not going to be taking place is the is the ducks um, for the, the brakes. But, you know, after, you know, obviously we had our last show and that was down at the EcoBoost 400 for Miami for the um, last show of, the, of 2018. And we had all of our picks there for, you know, the top four, who was going to win the championship. And nobody picked you know, this person uh, that they thought that would win it. But uh, this week, uh, I'm going to go with Joey Logano as my burning rubber pick. Um, and, and obviously, after the disappointment of last week at Daytona, you know, they were right there in the fold to possibly win the race. Um, you know, they got off to a poor start this, this week at uh, Atlanta with qualifying in the 22nd position, or excuse me, 27th position. Um, but honestly, I can't remember the last time I, I've seen Joey Bag of Donuts Logano qualify this poorly. Um, it wasn't just him. It was basically Team Penske in general. Uh, they, in, they also mm -hmm. qualified very poorly with Blaney qualifying in the 26th position and Keselowski starting from the 19th, 19th position. And that's if Keselowski races. Uh, Austin Centric. Uh, of their Xfinity series is kind of in, in uh, a backup role this week um, because Keselowski's definitely under the weather. Um, so he may end up driving for Keselowski, but we don't know that until uh, tomorrow takes place. But with, like I said, with this new rules package, these guys uh, will definitely keep the field tighter, um, make for more definitely side-by-side -side racing, which will be really fun to watch. Joey was ninth fastest uh, in the first practice and happy hour practice today. He was seventh fastest in single lap averages and was ninth fastest in 10 lap averages. Uh, although Logano has never won here in his 12 career starts, uh, we do only race here at Atlanta one time per year. Um, but the problem is the multiple variables and, and here's where this is going to come tomorrow. Um, I, I have no doubt that he will probably have a top 10 finish obviously barring any, any unforeseen circumstances, but there are those multiple variables in one, which is his salary. He's $11,700 this week, which is second highest to only the man here at, and which is Kevin Harvick. Um, but um, the other thing is, you know, you need a guy that's obviously going to get, you know, dominator points, but I think like, you, know, you do have that opportunity to get that place differential starting from that 27th position and also, you know, dominator points as well if he can get up front. And I think uh, him and his crew chief, Todd Gordon, are going to come up with a great strategy early just to try to get him up front. And I think it's going to boil down to 
um, a strategy they're going to take, whether that's, you know, something happens early and um, maybe they stay out. But tire, I mean, the tire, they're going to get eaten up uh, at this track because of how old the surface is. But uh, secondly, there are so many other good drivers this week who are starting out from higher than their normal starting positions. Harvick is one of them. He's starting from the 18th spot. Keselowski starting from the 19th. Blaney starting from the 26th spot. And then, of course, we can't forget about old Chase Elliott. He's starting from the 22nd spot, just to name a few of them. Uh, but last but certainly not least is, like we talked about, which is this new rules package that is coming into play this weekend. And, and like we talked, like I said before, it's not the full package. But uh, we have no idea what this what these guys are going to do. I mean, we got a little snippet of it last year at the All-Star Race at Charlotte, but it's kind of an unknown territory that we're coming into here. Um, so basically, this will be new for everyone going into, you know, just not based off of history, uh, but for your lineups this weekend is just kind of going more with the gut feeling and using your intuition and the <laughs> analytics you have available to you uh, from today. But I just think Logano's starting position is fire within himself after missing out on the Daytona 500 last week and coming off of his 2018 championship. I think that there's just something to prove, especially coming off uh, that far back in the field. I just think he's somebody you definitely have to have and is a must-own guy, and thus that's why he's my burning rubber pick this weekend. No, I, I understand your arguments for why he's a burning rubber pick. I think when you listed off the group of drivers and – talked a little bit about their salary, where they're starting in the back. Like, you laid out the problem with this week's lineups. It's going to be some sort of combination of a few of those guys, a couple of those guys, and at least a dominator. And you have a problem once you play the legitimate dominator, the guys with legitimate opportunities to dominate, that you're limited on what two of those guys you can play even and still have a semblance of a lineup that makes sense. Um Things get really tight this weekend. So I'm glad you talked about the, the the more place differential guys because where I went with my burning rubber pick is with Clint Boyer. And I think he and the Stuart Haas guys have basically the better potential to dominate this weekend. And I like let, let me get let me dive into the pick. First of all, Clint Boyer's plane when he got to the airfield had absolutely no power. So they couldn't even get the plane to start. He had to run down the tarmac, flag down another plane, and beg them to take him to Atlanta. He then gets to Atlanta 15 minutes before the first practice and proceeds to be the fastest car in practice one. Then, in qualifying, he's the fastest car on track in round one of qualifying and in round two of qualifying. Round three of qualifying, he slips behind his teammates. Then, in final practice... Guess who was top of the board again? Clint Boyer. This guy is fast this week, and he seems to understand what his car can and can't do in this new barrel package on this track. I really, really like this play. We've seen this movie before when he starts in the top three. We've seen this movie before when he's had these kind of practice stats. He likely dominates the race. And last year when he did this, we completely dismissed it because Boyer wasn't that type of guy before he went to Stuart Haas, but now he is that kind of guy, and I see it happening. If you want a little bit lower ownership, in my opinion, I think you can play his teammate Almarola, who's starting on the pole, as another potential dominator. I personally don't have it happening that way. I have Boyer overtaking his teammate, but I could easily see that Almarola is the lowest owned pole setter for the season, and we're getting it to happen in week two. I also really like Suarez, their teammate starting fifth. Like, that's another great play. Um, uh, the, the car I'm not interested in in the top three is Sticky Ricky starting second. Um, he, he's in the, hey, he's in the hugs, jugs of love <laughs> car. Like, those sweet little barrels of syrup. Uh, you know, like, maybe, maybe that'll give him some good luck. But if we remember last season, every time he was in that hugs car, he thrashed that car. So, go with it what you will. I just, I'm not playing any Sticky Ricky starting second. But back to Stuart Haas, you talked about it a little bit. Harvick starting 18th. I think this is a unique position because unlike the Penske guys, in my opinion, he not only gives you the place differential, 
but he also has the ability to dominate at this track. I think they're just that much faster, all the Stuart Haas cars are, than the Penske cars. So if you're going to pay up for Harvick, he may be super low owned. I, I don't think he should be, but he might be because of his price tag and what we've talked about with ownership, how you have to sacrifice a couple of the expensive guys to make your lineup make sense. So there's an opportunity even to get Harvick starting 18th where he can get you place differential and dominator points. But at his salary, he literally has to do that right. for him to pay off. That's the only problem. So, Lear, I know I threw out a bunch of information there about Stuart Haas and Boyer. What are your thoughts? Well, I think definitely you've got to be cognizant of the fact that Stuart Haas was the best team last year without an unequivocal doubt between the wins with Boyer that he got last year, that the ones that Harvick got last year, which maybe if they had this new inspection, you know, after the races took place last year, how many of those races would Kevin Harvick have really won, you know, without <laughs> going to the, the, the R and D center, uh, you know, instead of doing it right there at the racetrack, you know, within 90 minutes of the race being finished, how many of those would he have lost? I, I don't know. I mean, obviously we had that issue last year with him with the spoiler being too large. And, um, but by that time it's too late when Wednesday rolls around, you can't take that win away from him. So that's one thing I'm definitely going to like this year. Um, but as far as fantasy is concerned, um, I kind of still don't know how that's going to work. I mean, um, I think they're still going to give it to the person um, that actually won the race, it, even if they get disqualified. That I don't know. I have, have a few more research. Yeah, on until that. until DraftKings makes an announcement, I like, and I would assume that we're just going to stick with the official race results when they become official at the beginning, or what DraftKings sure. pays out on. Like, but I think you make a valid point there. Continue, please. But um, no, I, I definitely agree with you. Um, Harvick has been the man here uh, at Atlanta. The only thing is, is with Harvick, with that $12,200 price point, um, you know, I know it's not that much further than my Joey Logano pick. My only difference or my only reason for Logano is because he's almost starting 10 positions higher than Harvick mm -hmm. and essentially could still have a top 10 finish just like Harvick. But here's the thing is, I don't, it's not like last year when Harvick could come, if he had a poor qualifying and could come up from, you know, the middle of the teens, like if you start from 18th and go straight up to the front and then lead a bunch of laps, it's not going to be like that this year. Yeah. Not with this new aero package. I mean, <laughs> look, look at his, look at his times um, so far this weekend. I mean, they're okay. They're not overly impressive by any means. I mean, the guy that you are to talk about, Clint Boyer, has been the one that's been impressive. Same with him and Eric Amarola. Well, um, hold on, dude. So that's so, like, in all fairness, that's because Harvick was having steering uh, power steering issues. They went in, they they addressed the power steering issues, and then when he came out and did with with the proper power steering in happy hour practice, that car was the fourth fastest in ten lap averages on the board. Now, I, I think that shows to me that they got the situation corrected and and are back at that pace where he can plow through the field and get up front. But sure. I, I understand what you're saying. Practices before then were absolutely garbage for them, though. Like, but, right. but let's just take a little snippet of today and of what happened. And we had Christopher Bell. I know he didn't start on the pole. He started from the third place position. But the guy led 140-some laps of 160 I think it was 163 laps today. I think there could be a possibility of that same thing happening tomorrow, uh, whether that's Eric Amarola. I mean, I like Eric Amarola. I think the guy has done basically a 180 as far as his confidence is concerned um, with you know him winning last year, um, being in Stuart Haas, obviously having better equipment than what he was in before. He's got the confidence, and now he's got a pole under his belt, too. Uh, it's real early in the 2019 season. That's going to give that guy a lot of confidence. I really like Eric Amarola tomorrow. And same thing with Clint Boyer. I do like Clint Boyer as well. I just don't know if you can really roll with a combo of Eric Amarola and Clint Boyer and still get enough, even if they split dominating points. Uh, I don't know if it's still going to be enough to where – the rest of, you know, get the rest of the points from the rest of the field, or if you just have to basically pick one and be done with it. I still have some things to figure out there myself, but um, 
I'm, I'm telling you, I, I think that Stuart Haas will also have a, a, another dominating 2019 season. Um, I just, uh, I don't know, man. I'm definitely not going to be going with Sticky Ricky um, starting from that second position. That's just way over his head for him. I, I, did you catch any of the video content this week of the other drivers uh, on the radio talking about him in the in the Daytona 500 last week. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Like <laughs> how garbage they were saying that he is of a driver he is, and uh, I don't know, it was pretty hilarious. But um, you know, and I, I like the Daniel Suarez move over from JGR over to Stuart Haas Racing. But in my opinion, um, do I think he's worthy enough of picking tomorrow for some of your teams? You may want to go that route as like a um, you know, to get out on an island for yourself. But honestly, that's not really where I'm looking at for myself. But, um, you know, I think that, that uh, Suarez is definitely somebody you got to look for. Um, but in my opinion, I think there's some other guys that, that I would like to put on my team more than, than those guys. But I definitely think that I will have some pretty good exposure on Arola and Clint Boyer. Um, not as much on Kevin Harvick, and I know a lot of people will probably be like, "What the hell? He's starting from 18th. Why wouldn't you?" Um, I just, I don't know, man. For the price, I mean, I'm going to have exposure on him. Yeah, I no, just, I think you've leveled out your argument for why, like, yeah. why you're off of Harvick, and it makes sense. Like, I think that that's going to carry a lower ownership, and that you get a unique opportunity there with some place differential. Like, it might pan out, it may not, it, you know. But I think his ownership is going to be significantly down for who has been the best driver on the circuit for the past couple of years. For so, sure. But, yeah. I mean, as, as long as you guys have watched this show, I mean, we've been doing it consistently. Uh, I mean, there have been some bumps here and there, you know, uh, but we've been pretty consistent with our show. But um, you guys know that usually when, hit, when Big Pop and I talk it out, I mean, at some point during that, that race, you've got to pick your drivers and stick with your guns that, okay, this is – these are the guys I'm going with, and if it if it screws me, it screws me. I mean, it's, it's oh. the way it has to go. No, for sure, and that's that's basically the and especially with salaries. Yeah. I mean. Well, and speaking of salaries, that helps us transition. This this week, maybe even this season, we're not we may not be doing the value segment where we talk about a specific value driver. We're just going to talk about the drivers that we like the best in the value segment. And before we get into the value segment, I think it's important to talk about. DraftKings pricing is really messed up on a lot of these drivers this week, which is creating really interesting scenarios. Like, yes, D Burrito is better at racing this season and that car is faster, but pricing him at 7,600 is absurd, which should decrease his ownership percentage, which kind of makes me want to play him, but I don't really want to play him because he's 7,600. So it's it, like, I feel like the way they price things this week, especially in the value range, you have those, you have your. You're torn between what makes actual sense and what may direct you to lower ownership plays. And, like, do you have anybody in that range that you're really looking at? I know when we talked earlier, Bowman and Byron are really interesting plays that both of us have talked about. You lose a little bit of the place differential play over Chase Elliott, their, t- his team, their teammate, but you save over $2,000 in playing one of those guys instead of Chase Elliott. Um Without a doubt, I mean, that's a huge cost savings right there. But uh, one person I do want to talk about, and the guy that, I mean, he started off speed weeks hotter than a, a button. But, I mean, this guy had a great speed weeks. He won the duel. Um, he's got a new crew chief. He's got a new aura about himself. He's got a new sponsor. And that's Jimmy Johnson, buddy. I mean, Jimmy Johnson, the guy's a seven-time champion. We all kind of wrote him off last year is obviously, I mean, that was by far his worst season of all of his seasons that he's ever had. I mean, but to come back this season, he's got a a new uh, aura about himself. He's got all these new things with him uh, this season. Um, And he's starting from the 11th spot this week, boys and girls. And the other thing is, He's kind of still dirt cheap. He's eighty three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. We're talking about a seven time championship driver and a guy that's in one of the top equipment cars in the sport. Um, so, I mean, you better play some Jimmy Johnson tomorrow. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, see, I, I, I like the idea behind it. Him starting eleventh though, getting there is the problem. Yeah, like the amount of money he costs, plus having 
playing a driver that starts 11th when I'm worried more about place differential plays after my dominator. I don't have Jimmy Johnson Johnson dominating this week. Maybe I'm wrong on that. But with that, I'm not sure I could spend the money there. It, when, it, when I've thought about it, I've just thought I would be better off jumping down to Eric Jones starting 15th, four spots back, and save the 200 bucks, or jumping even further down. But, you know, at a certain point, a lot of people are going to be believing those things and thinking about those things. Jimmy Johnson may help get you on an island. And we've seen several times over the past year where the right combination is a dominator, somebody from that 10 to 15 range, and then place differential guys as well. So we've seen that, that lineup construction work several times for people to take down tournaments. So it's definitely a possibility. Currently, though, it's just not somewhere I'm looking, which, once again, may tip you a little bit. To Ownership will be low on Jimmy Johnson, so that might be a play you want to make. But I'm just not seeing it. But similar to how you were worried about Harvick's point total getting there, I'm worried about Jimmy Johnson's point total getting there, even though he's significantly cheaper. But, like, I... He's, only, he's like, fourth. Well, right, right. I, I understand that. But what I'm saying is, they both have different point expectations that they have to hit at their salaries. And I, I have the same problem with Jimmy that you do with Harvick, right? Like, Harvick has to dominate to make, be worthwhile. Jimmy Johnson has to finish top five, actually top three, even at that salary to, like, make it pay off for you, right? Sure. If he's not dominant. And, and I'll be honest, like, he wasn't, you know, he didn't have the best of practice times this week. Um to be frank with you, mm-hmm. um, you know, he was 27th fastest in happy hour and single lap average. So, I mean, yeah, that's a little scary. But at the same time, I ha- I mean, it's Jimmy Johnson. But, like, I just I have this feeling that they know what they're doing. And, um, you know, it's really instead of having Chad Knauss in his ear, kind of, I'm sorry, but the way that, that Chad Knauss talked to Jimmy Johnson on the radio, it's like, now Jimmy Johnson is kind of the uh, in charge of his own fate pretty much week to week. I mean, he can listen to his crew chief, but ultimately it's Jimmy Johnson's decision on what he's going to do with Jimmy Johnson's car. Um, I can't so. believe, Lear, that you ha- that I'm having to pull a Lear here and say like, that you haven't talked about Michael McDowell starting 12th and use your favorite argument. If he just holds the position, he'll be worth it. And at... <laughs> 6K, it's a little bit much for him to just hold the position, but I think if he can hold the position and as fast as those cars have been, he'll be worth it. And I didn't hear that argument from you. It kind of scares me. Am, am I pulling a leer here? Or, <laughs> or I mean, he... I like Michael McDowell. Uh, I, I think that, you know, especially, too, getting the confidence that, they're, that they, you know, got last week uh, from Daytona. And, I mean, in – basically making the survival of what is known as Daytona. But, um, you know, I, I think that that team definitely is probably going to perform better this year than they did last year. Um, I just don't know if I can personally get their brother this week with him starting so high in the field uh, with that 12th position, even though, I mean, his cost is, you know, way down there. Um, when you talk about salaries, I mean, he's six grand, but there are just some other drivers that I like even more. One of them, if we're going to talk about him, is Daniel Hemrick, uh, starting from the 28th position, uh, $6,800. Um, I mean, I had a, I had a lot of exposure on Daniel Hemrick last weekend at the Daytona 500. Cause he, uh, started, I think roughly in the same spot, wasn't he 27th or 28th, yeah, roughly. not 28th because that's where Jones started, but I think it was 27th. Um, but, I had a lot of exposure on Hemrick uh, last weekend, uh, a guy that uh, obviously was a great racer in the Xfinity series has moved up to the cup series this year, driving the iconic number eight for Richard Childress. Um, so I think that team, uh, you know, it's not going to be uh, somebody that's going to be consistently up there with the big boys, uh, but it's definitely somebody that's young, uh, vibrant um, coming into a, uh, you know, race with all the big boys of the of the entire um, NASCAR community, and I think it's uh, a great situation for him. Um, I'm just worried about his equipment uh, compared to other people's equipment, uh, but I think 
with the talent that this uh, that Daniel Hemrick has, I think he can do a lot more with his race car than what his equipment will allow him to do. So um, I, I'm, I'm excited to see what Daniel Hemrick can do this season, but I'm definitely at a $6,800 price point. Um, we're not talking specifically about value, but that's a value guy to me this weekend. And somebody else I'd like to talk about too, sorry to keep going, but it's Chris Buscher uh, in the number uh, 37 with uh, JTG. He's starting from a sweet place differential spot at the 30th position, and he's only $6,200 this week. And uh, that team uh, was doing fairly well uh, last weekend at Daytona before, you know, the wreck happened and Ryan Priest, you know, miracle went through everything and, and made it out clean as a whistle. But uh, I, I think that uh, both of those guys uh, this season and JTG, um, unfortunately, Almendinger couldn't make the cut, but, um, he was too much of a uh, specialty racer, in my opinion. Now you've got two guys in the fold that are that are o- overall generally, I think, better drivers. Uh, and I don't know, Chris Busher just year after year keeps getting better and better. Um, so I think Chris Busher is somebody too that you got to be cognizant of for tomorrow as well. No, I, I completely agree with your arguments. My question is, what the hell happened to Jamie Lear? Like you're making my arguments for me, like that, like. I had to make your argument for you, and now you settled in on my style of argument. No, these are better plays, less risky. I, I just, I'm trying to figure out what what happened to Jamie Lear. <laughs> I mean, those are just guys I like. Um, I mean, there are you know other plays that you can make too um, that are starting a little bit higher. That oh honestly- no, for sure. I'm talking about like in your analysis though. You always like to use the gut feeling for a guy starting too high, and like this week, I do that for you. You argue out of it, and then argue like all the guys that I'm liking a lot this week. I just I wondered what happened to Jamie Lear, and if there was like some sort of personality swap, like a lobotomy, maybe. <laughs> well, we had a Thanksgiving, we had a Christmas, we had a New Year coming to play. Um, I don't know, just a little bit of time, and um, you know, it's uh, it's definitely good to be back, bro. I was so excited to do this show, um, but. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's one of those to where it's going to be have to be a, a fine level of, of all of that, you know, to get that perfect result that you're looking for. Oh, and for essentially, sure. that's what it has to be. I mean, this week, it's a little bit different than last week. We had the 88,000 uh, field uh, for the 100K this week. Uh, same price, 100,000 to first, uh, but half of the field at 47,000. Uh, so, um, you know, you're you're still going to have to have a pretty much perfect lineup. Um, but, uh, you know, in that situation, though, I mean, like you and I were talking about, um, Corey LaJoy, uh, that's a guy that is a huge salary reliever, and he's starting a little bit higher than normally than you'd like to start. But if he can just hold his position or, you know, get 25th or 26th at a $5,200 price point, that still pays off for you as long as he can finish right there where he started. Um, you know, that's somebody else that I like too. So, well, I, I, I was just commenting on you being more restrained and more uh, a tad bit more on the logical side as opposed to the side, uh, as opposed to, uh, as opposed to the gut instinct side that, 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 the, that, that the Learjet there. is known for. Like, <laughs> all right, guys, just uh, like, we've been a little long winded, uh, I know we're running a little long, so just I will go ahead and give us our going to the garage pick. I think we're both in agreement. Neither one of us want to touch Sticky Ricky with a 10-foot pole this week, even though he's cheap. If you want to do it and try to be one of those people on an island with the Sticky Ricky domination strategy, feel free to, and I hope it works out for you if that's the case, even though it'll cost me money because I'm going to own zero pieces. Lear, I'm pretty sure you're in agreement. We good to move on? Oh, yeah. All right. Now that we've gotten that taken play, taken care of, and we've talked about pretty much all we can with the limited information we have for this race, Lear, I, we need to do some housekeeping stuff. Uh, we've got a diecast winner from last year, the new league. Go ahead and tell us about those things. Sure, brother. Um, well, one, uh, I wanted to say um, we appreciate you definitely all your guys' participation uh, last year in watching the show and then also – um, in the league. I mean, the league was fantastic. I had enjoyed myself every single week. 
Um, I wore myself out every single week with my full-time job, my full-time family, and then also having to keep stats on the league. So um, I just, it got to a point where I, I, I just can't do it, uh, you know, with mm-hmm. also trying to do the show every week as well. Um, so it's not just something where we just, you know, open up our computers and start, you know, talking about stuff. Um, you know, we do do some research, obviously, and um, put together a format and everything else. But um, uh, I definitely wanted to say, you know, we did uh, have the league start up last weekend at Daytona. Uh, was a little bit late in notifying everybody. Um, but uh, hopefully all you guys that are still out there are still part of the community on the Rubin Racing Champions League. Uh, if not, um, I will put up a, uh, and Papa as well, we'll put up mm-hmm. uh, a link to where you can join the league. Um, but definitely a huge shout out um, to Andy uh, Simic. Um, he stepped up to the plate and said he will keep all the stats this season uh, for the league. Um, so, um Again, Andy, from the bottom of my heart, I tip my cap. Um, <laughs> Thank you, you know, dude. Thank you. Uh, don't don't know what else I can say, but uh, thank you so much for uh, doing that and stepping up to the plate and, and doing that for us. Um, and then also, too, to kind of close the chapter on 2018, um, congratulations to DJ Primek. Uh, Dakota Primek is his name. Um, I know you're out there, Dakota. Uh, please, please, please get a hold of uh, Papa and I either via uh, the link on the show on YouTube or get a hold of us on Twitter, uh, also on the Rubin is Racing uh, Facebook page, any way that you can, and we will get that diecast out to you. Uh, you just got to let us know which one that you would like. And then the third thing is um, uh, basically Kevin Evans uh, from last year. Uh, your comment, sir, uh, we appreciate it, but you were the lucky winner uh, of the um, hero cards uh, that I had promised at the last show. So you, sir, please DM me on Twitter uh, with your address, and I will make sure that I ship out some of those hero cards to you uh, for your uh, great and uh, comments that you made uh, about the show. And, and thank you to everybody last year, too, uh, for all your comments that you made. Um, it just means a ton to me and Papa um, that uh, that you guys love the show that much. And we love doing it. It's just that uh, if we're going to keep doing it, uh, we got to make it sure that it's worth doing. So, um, but yes, thank you guys very, very much. Yeah, guys, uh, once again, those comments made everything. And when Lear and I were had taken some time off and started talking about the comments and how much we were going to miss you guys and miss commenting you know, about NASCAR and fantasy NASCAR. We decided that we would start it up again. Again, apologies for missing last weekend uh, with being under the weather, but we're back right now. Um, next week, we'll talk about some ways that possibly you guys can help support us in the show and we'll get that out to you guys. And hopefully we'll be able to do some really cool stuff with the show this year and maybe take it to some cool places and do some cool things with it. So with that said, guys, thanks again for tuning in as always. Uh, it's the Rubbin' is Racing Show. Uh, remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment since we're back. And we'll talk to you guys as much as possible for both of us before race time on the YouTube channel. And until then, if I'm not winning money, hopefully it's one of you guys. And, but really, I hope it's me or Lear. <laughs> well, damn it it was me today until freaking last thing happened and yeah, I, I, that's fantasy i was cruising in the truck still the red flag and then lost a bunch. i mean i still made money but lost a bunch but you know but that's the sick part is uh i mean just to sidetrack it real quick but i went to world of wheels today uh here in kansas city uh, i don't know if anybody's ever gone or you've ever been i mean it's awesome sh- uh, auto show Lots of cars. I mean, they've got everything from pro stock to, um, you know, modifieds to, um, you know, uh, basically uh, cars that have been completely uh, rotisserie, um, you know, done. And I mean, it's just. Rotisserie done? Like they cooked them like a chicken? Yeah, kind of. You know, I know you don't work in the the body industry, uh, Papa, but, you know, it's like you basically take a car and put it on a. Uh, on a rotisserie and then that's how you kind of do the the whole entire 
uh, car is, you know, that's how you get it back to uh, the way you want it. And, uh, and the guy kids, work, you learn something new every day. Apparently, yeah, I, I, the guy I worked with uh, uh, actually had his 72 Nova there. Um, unbelievable. Um, just the car looks amazing. It's all tubbed out in the back, um, carbon fiber. Um, it, it's crazy. He's got tubes that have the air that come through. There's an ice chest or cooler in the back of the car. The air comes all the way back and goes back into the motor. Um, but it's unbelievable. Anyway, side note there. Um, but anyways, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was there today. Um, so I actually got my, uh, two of my quarter panels that I have. So the one up here, the nationwide one, and then the exalt one, uh, got them autographed today and it was cool to actually first time I ever met Dale and uh, a lot smaller than I what than I anticipated, but uh, super nice guy. You don't remember how small he was when I was running after him trying to get an autograph. Like, and he didn't get it. I didn't get it because that weird guy scared him off. Like, that was crazy. <laughs> and you would think it would be the giant guy that's large chasing him down that scared him off. No, he was waiting to sign my thing. And then some weird dude came up and, like, scared Dale Earnhardt Jr. That dude scared me. He was so weird. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we've, we've gone on long enough. Thanks again. For two today, guys, we love being with you again. Have a great one, and let's win some money this week. Have a great weekend, everybody, and uh, best of luck tomorrow. And thank you for watching, uh, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. <laughs> Bye, y'all.